وسهلا بكل الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي او الراديو عربي امريكي ويعنى بقضايا الهرب في المهجر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر وعبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Atif Abdelgawad reporting from Washington. Good morning. Just think of a new democratic country in the heart of the Middle East, a close ally of the U.S. and a friend of Israel. Kurdistan, a dream for the Kurdish people and a nightmare for others, including Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Syria. The U.S. has rejected the recent Kurdish referendum, saying it would create instability in the region and distract from fighting terrorism. So what are the real pluses and minuses of an independent Kurdistan? And where is the region heading next? We'll be discussing these and other issues with our panel of distinguished guests, Mr. Joe Macaron, policy analyst, Mr. Sherko Habas, president of the Kurdistan National Assembly of Syria, and Ms. Astabrak Dawood, a journalist and political analyst. And I would like to invite our audience to join in in the discussion by calling 248 557-3300. Once again, 248-557-3300. My first question will go to all my panel, uh, all our guests. And that is, what is the likely consequence, result, of the referendum on other Kurdish people in, in neighboring countries, not just in Iraq, but in Turkey, Iran, Syria, and elsewhere. And let's start with Mr. Uh, Joe Macaron. Um, uh, good morning, uh, first to you, and to, to all the guests and, and, uh, and the listeners. Uh, definitely there is a, uh, a consequence, especially for uh, neighboring Syria. Because they had their local election recently, they are thinking also about their future within or or separate from from the new Syria that will emerge uh, at some point. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, the uh, Kurds in uh, in Turkey or Iran will reach the same uh, autonomy or like the others, but they will look at this as a as a as a hope. They might maybe some of them move there if it's really they succeed to build uh, to have a state in. Uh, uh, in, in Iraq. This is why uh, there's so much pressure from the neighboring country on what's happening in Kurdistan because they know that it's going to be a game. Uh, uh, it changes the game, the dynamic of the game and the uh, uh, and the regions, why the pressure is increasing uh, somehow. But but I think the, the most significant impact is going to be on uh, on Syria. The way things turn out in, for Kurdistan is uh, going to have an immediate uh, impact on Syria. Mr. Abbas. Uh, good morning uh, to your listener and to the guest uh, as well, and your panel. Uh, yeah, the issues of the Kurdish issue, it is uh, it's somehow um, going to surface to the front stage. Uh, the Kurdish issue needs to be addressed. The Kurds have longed for more than a, uh, 
uh, century, and it's about time to correct the injustice done to the Kurds. Uh, and uh, number the uh, number of the nations in that region that oppress their people, whether it be in Persian, uh, Turks, Arabs, Kurds, and, and other minority, they are unhappy about this uh, changes in, in the Middle East. They would like to keep the status quo. The, the, the very same people who hate psycho Pico agreement, yet they are the very same people trying to hold on to it. Uh, so they contradict themselves, uh, democracy here. Uh, but the, the Kurds are uh, proven that they're moderate, proven that they can live with Arabs, uh, with Christian, with other minorities. Uh, and they're tolerant, not uh, oppressive. And they have, uh, they're not even a nation uh, for the last 20 some years. They built the Kurdistan region of Iraq to so almost a nation and the only uh, democratic nation, really. Uh, you know, if you look at the, a lot of the Arab nations in the Middle East, Middle East uh, in terms of democracy, Kurdistan has managed to come up from the destruction of Saddam did to the Kurds to today almost uh, uh, slowly catching up with Dubai and elsewhere in terms of building and, and bringing and protecting minorities and, 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 and including Arab and Christian and everybody else in Iraqi Kurdistan. We have a couple million refugees right now taking care of them, and we're not a nation. So the Kurds will emerge, and that will affect those nations, and that's why, hence, they're trying to oppress the Kurds to keep them, deny 40, 50 million people in the Middle East their right that uh, other nations have those rights. Um, Ms. Dawood. Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for hosting. Uh, first of all, I would like to say I respect, as an Iraqi citizen, I respect uh, the Kurdish people, and I have that they should have the same rights as any Iraqi citizen. But regarding the referendum, I believe it is not a good move because currently everybody know Iraq is a dysfunctional state uh, where you have war, where you have economic instability and a politically uh, polarized situation. Therefore, Kurdistan uh, breaking uh, this and uh, would only lead this uh, referendum step uh, lead to more instability in the region. And also, you know, the you know regionally and internationally uh, situation, uh, war against the terrorism and uh, some special situation in Syria, and also this area around the territory, Kurdish territory. Uh, every single uh, country in Turkey, Iran, Syria, and Iraq, uh, Kurdish component is the main of their, uh, you know, their societies. So that will maybe uh, generate a negative impact in the future, and uh, maybe something uh, political, and maybe that will develop in future to military action. No one know, but anyway, uh, now. As Iraqi citizen, uh, I just support and encourage every single side in dispute. Uh, in this dispute, go to negotiation, to national dialogue, sponsored by uh, United Nations and uh, some regional, you know, sides and Arabic. Uh, actually, talks, talks, talks supposed to be, okay. Uh, stop escalating, uh, and also uh, they need to uh, uh, they need to use their wisdom because uh, you know the uh, the situation in Iraq now is so complicated, uh, high level unemployment and uh, economic very uh, now you know uh, kind of collapse. Uh, so I think uh, the situation now doesn't allow to uh, make this step, and uh, also uh, from time to time uh, they threatening the Iraqi government uh, to announce their, you know, announcement. I think. Okay. That, yes. Yeah, I'll get back to you in a second. Uh, but let me go to uh, Joe. Um, 
a minute ago you talked about change of dynamics of the game in the region. Give me an example. I mean, obviously, uh, you have uh, the meeting, the summit meeting between Erdogan and Rouhani yesterday. The Turkish and the Iranians find themselves now more uh, uh, in tune to to deal with this and other. Uh, Turkey is getting closer to Russia. We we see what happened in in Idlib also. So uh, Turkey is basically reconsidering its uh, continuing the trend of reconsidering its uh, its alliances in that sense. Uh, and uh, also you have uh, Iran changing also its role in, in Iraq. You see there's more aggressiveness um, in that sense. And then U.S. also has, uh, 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 I mean, I think some leaders in Kurdistan were maybe uh, hoping that the U.S. would be more, su- most, more supportive, but uh, it continued to balance the relation between Baghdad and Erbil and uh, in a way that considering the referendum is illegal but not allowing uh, violent solution or any, uh, uh, you know, going to war against Kurdistan or using any, any violence. And uh, Iran see an opportunity also to uh, now to uh, react its influence in Iraq uh, after it was a little bit weakened in, uh, in the last few months. Um, so yeah, it was a game changer in that sense that it took over the war on ISIS and, be, and became the priority for many of the uh, regional players. And uh, and the way it's gonna end, it's gonna have an impact also on who will have influence in uh, in, in Iraq and the neighborhood uh, moving forward. Mr. Abbas, you talked about the Kurds as being suppressed and oppressed. Is that universal in the entire region? I mean, we know that in Iraq they enjoy autonomy, a great deal of autonomy. Uh, yes, I think uh, Iraqi Kurds, they enjoy that, uh, not all the territory. and just only recently got the whole territory back, uh, the Kurdish disputed area as well. Uh, so, uh, but not uh, long ago, uh, Saddam Hussein destroyed more than uh, 5,000 villages completely in, in chemical use, chemical weapons in the Kurds. Turkey, Iran, Syria, they're all oppressive regime. They kill and they deny the Kurdish people. Uh, Syria, five years ago, before or six years ago, there were zero Kurds according to the Syrian regime uh, in Syria. But we know uh, 1957, there were census done, that more than one-third of Syria were actually Kurds, uh, but they've been Arabized and, and changed and oppressed and, and taken citizenship away from them. Mm-hmm. So the Kurds have been oppressed. You know, my... Um, uh, I guess one of your guests, uh, Joe, had mentioned a few things in their, uh, you know, illegal referendum. Who is to say illegal or not illegal? When the majority of people want to be free and oppressed, why it is okay for everybody else, not for the Kurds? Then Iraqi, when they say constitution, great. So constitution, they had Article 140 and other stuff. Why they didn't comply with those articles? They only bring in way the constitution at you when they want to use it for themselves, but they don't comply to it. Iraq is a Shia state today. It is controlled by Iran. It is an Iran puppet state. And in fact, when you look at the Daesh and ISIS, that is also creation of Iran and Syria and others initially to bring and make the Sunni look bad. Uh, and, and, and hence, that's why Iraqi government, Maliki, left all the, the army basically not fight, and then eventually laid on other group, and militant group that they took. It's not a homogeneous group, but Iran, uh, you know, it is uh, have a hand in ISIS, and hence just recently a Syrian regime that took some of the units of ISIS uh, back uh, and, and allowed them to be part of the Syrian uh, regime's coalition. The Kurds, you know, we, we talk about the <laughs> referendum. Why there's a 22 Arab nation, why the Kurds don't have, uh, don't have their own uh, nation, and it is our nation was split. It's Kurdistan split among Iraq, Iran, Turkey, and Syria. We talked about Cyprus Peacock Agreement, yet what you guys want to hold on to the Cyprus Peacock Agreement and why that should be forced, or we get forced to be part of that organization. We are not Iraq. Iraq is a creation. Uh, it was created by two uh, individuals who uh, served their interest of their nation. So uh, when we look at this, U.S., yes, they may be publicly saying one thing, but behind the scenes, realize the only other uh, democratic nation being developed in that region, it is a Kurdistan. In Kurdistan, the only one is fighting ISIS. Uh, and, and I heard uh, your other uh, distinguished uh, guest had mentioned 
stability. What stability? Show me an Arab nation have been developing all they see destruction and killing, and there's no democracy. So what has happened over the last century in Iraq and Syria but war and destruction? Uh, where's the stability? What kind of stability you're talking about? Look at the only haven in stability. And, 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 and speaking of democracy right now, the Kurdistan region is not even a nation. So uh, all we hear waving wars and killing and, and, and dissatisfied with the international uh, artificial boundaries were created, created more than a century ago, yet uh, we, we always wanted to oppress and deny the Kurds and make them Arab. We, if we're not, you know, you have broken marriage, and if it, it's best thing to have a divorce and be a civil instead of just forcing the other people. Uh, this idea of domination and, and melting others to become, a, whether an Arab or Turk or Persian, we need to stop that. We need to think about humanity and let people live and be what they want to be. Okay, well, uh, when we come back after the break, I will ask uh, Mr. Dawood to respond to Mr. Abbas about that point of whether or not Kurdish independence might create instability. We'll be back in a second. The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria, as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248-990-4247. Ziad Brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Dana, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad quality products from our family to yours. Are you ready to go back to get that degree you've always wanted? Is there a young person in your life looking for the right college? Are you ready to transfer to a four-year institution? Well, take a look at today's Marygrove College, a tradition of academic excellence right here, right now in the city of Detroit. Classes start September 5th. There's still time to apply for fall and get scholarships. Don't pass up this opportunity. Marygrove.edu. Ahlan Bikum fi Marygrove College. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American Board Certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 a.m and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Baladi. We are talking and discussing the Kurdish issue. And before we continue our discussion, we have Mr. Jerry Habba on the line on the telephone. Um, please go ahead, Jerry. Thank you, Dr. Atif Abdel Jawad. Good morning to you and good morning to your distinguished guests. 
Uh, allow me, Dr. Atif Abdi Jawad, before anything, to give my sympathy, my condolences to the Kurdish people for the path of the late president of Iraq, Mr. Jalal Al-Talabani. Dr. Atif Abdi Jawad, my question is to your guest. The Kurdistan of Iraq has a three provinces, which is Erbil, Sulaymaniya, Dehok. I don't mind to see any nation apply to determine their future. But when the Kurdistan of Iraq ask or demand to take the uh, rich oil province of Kirkuk, which is almost coming down to the border of Iraqi capital Baghdad, to Diyala. So I think, don't you think, uh, Kurdistan uh, leader, they are asking too much. I would love to hear the answer, and thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Mr. Abbas would like to respond. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, yes, uh, uh, President Talabani uh, can be uh, with him, and uh, thank you for uh, condolences. Uh, the, the issue of Kirkuk, Kirkuk, it is, it, it's a capital of Kurdistan of, of Iraq, and this is the main reason from uh, early creation of modern-day Iraq uh, as a state, as a failed state. The Kurds uh, never... Um, were able to make a, a, a good agreement with the central government of Iraq because of Kirkuk. This is the main reason where, uh, in the 1970s, the, 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 the autonomy uh, issues failed with the Saddam Hussein's government because of this. Kirkuk is part of Kurdistan. Kirkuk is part of Kurdistan. There was an attempt created by Saddam Hussein to actually uh, displaced Kurds there and Arabized there, and just like from Kurdistan of Syria, where uh, Arabs brought into the, our Kurdistan region, built uh, 42 Arab settlements in Kurdistan of Syria and made the Kurdistan uh, people of Syria illegal as well. The same thing occurred in Kirkuk. Uh, you know, when you look at the Arab uh, um, uh, culture in Iraq and Syria, the, the, the Ba'ath regimes, they were trying to basically Arabize the whole Middle East and, and, and purify the whole Middle East from uh, uh, from Morocco to the Persian Gulf. So this is a, the policy they pursued, and they used the death and destruction to do this. Kurdistan is part of uh, Kirkuk is part of Kurdistan. Uh, the Kurdish people in that region, the only people who fought ISIS, nobody else did. And you guys talked uh, earlier on about ISIS. ISIS. Uh, the only people who fought ISIS and resisted ISIS and stopped the terror and, and fought on behalf of humanity and protected, you know, whether you're Arab uh, or, uh, or a Christian or Yazidis or Kurds, whoever, uh, they, they protected them and they fought on their behalf in Kobani and in and, and, and Iraqi Kurdistan and elsewhere. And, and you're talking about stability, the issue of stability and, and uh, securities and other stuff that was brought up earlier on. Uh, tell me, what stability you're talking about here? I mean, what uh, what building, what has ha occurred? Uh, you, you know, look at the nations that Syria used to uh, help in 1940s and 50s. Korea, Korea to, uh, today, they build the best uh, uh, technology around the world. So uh, in what we build in Syria, uh, beside death and destruction. So we need to st reflect and start to really think and start stop blaming others. Let people be what they want to be, and, and, and if the Kurdish people want to be part of the Iraq and Syria, great. If they don't want, let them go their own way. And, and within our, the Kurdish region as well, there have been uh, other minorities, and their rights should be protected uh, as well, just like anybody else. Uh, so I think it's about time for us to really keep doing the same thing over and expecting different results. And this is a definition of madness. We have tried for more than a century a failed state, Iraq and Syria. They were creation, and it's about time those states to collapse. And Turkey as well. And Turkey is only 700 years. The Turks came to that region. The Kurds been there for 4,000 years. So it is about time for Turkey to recognize the Kurdish issues need to be addressed in Iraq and Iraq and, and in Syria and elsewhere. So the Kurdish people deserve a nation just like anybody else. Why the largest ethnic group in the world don't have a nation? Okay, let's uh, hear from uh, both uh, Mr. Ms. Uh, Dawood and uh, and Joe. Uh, so let's start with uh, Ms. Dawood. How, how do you respond to Mr. Abbas? Uh, again, I believe that every component in Iraq, whether it's to, uh, courts, Turkmen, Arab Sunni, Arab Shias, Christian, and etc., should have equal rights. 
and representation. Court uh, should stay with Iraq and in return uh, the Iraqi government in Baghdad. Iraqi government in Baghdad should continue Kurdish support financially, socially, and diplomatically because we are, again, we are stronger together uh, then we are separated. Actually, uh, I would like to remind uh, Mr. Abbas, the Kurdish region is surrounded by hostile circle. So uh, the Kurdish, when they stay in federal Iraq, is better than them. Uh, then they announce their state, and in the future, too many pro uh, problems will be and maybe uh, we're going to see wars with any other, you know, uh, neighbor, uh, especially uh, now you, uh, we see the speech of uh, Turkey president and uh, yesterday also uh, the supreme leader in Iran, Ali Khamenei. Uh, and uh, I think the time is not appropriate to uh, announce or to make this so, uh, referendum, excuse, excuse me, and I mind. think uh, the remain problems second. between the ter Kurdish territory and Iraqi government, uh, they can resolve it by talks and negotiation, and they can make, uh, you know, a national charter is supposed to be mandatory for each side in the disputes. Uh, actually, I, I would like to say also uh, the problem not j just between the Kurdish and, uh, you know, the Iraqi government. Let's see the other problems between uh, the Sunnis also component. They have also demands and uh, from time to time uh, uh, they need to establish their territory, especially uh, this section. I mean, the Federation is, is uh, including in the Iraqi uh, constitution. So uh, legally, it's OK. They, they can uh, establish their territory. Actually, this uh, this problems that uh, we uh, now see it every day. Okay, uh, this is the impact, negative impact of the previous Iraqi government, especially uh, previous Prime Minister Nur Maliki. He just he had led the country to this collapse, uh, economically and uh, you know uh, politically. And, okay, uh, um, Ms. Yeah. Abbas. Okay, you, you, you made you the just, point. You. I would like now to turn to Mr. Joe Macron to get his views on this. Um, I mean, uh, it's, it's a complicated issue. It's very, obviously, it's very uh, emotional issue for uh, for both sides. There's regional interest uh, at stake. It's not as simple as uh, if we can have a state or not. It's much more co complicated. Uh, so uh, the thing it's happened in a very transitional uh, period now for Iraq and, and Syria. Barzani was doing this bet. Uh, we have to see how how he will uh, how he will uh, survive it. Uh, the issue for Kurdistan is how to survive economically, uh, how to have the legal basis to uh, uh, to, to, to emerge as a state. Uh, so there are a lot of questions, and there is also problems in Kurdistan, whether election or problem or. Uh, we didn't have election for a while. There's a lot of uh, challenges also for this uh, autonomy on, on the long run. At the same time, they have their own uh, concerns that are legitimate in some sense, whether what happened with Saddam, whether what happened after ISIS. So there is need to, to have a real, genuine uh, discussion. There's no trust between both sides. And if there's no trust, the regional interest gonna gonna jump in and basically explore the situation. So there should be more uh, more uh, building trust, more genuine partnership in that sense. To decide what can what can be accepted from uh, from both sides moving forward. Otherwise, continuing on this road on this uh, path will not help. Uh, will weaken the central government and also will uh, will weaken. Uh, Kurdistan on the long term. So, uh, so there is no way out beyond beyond the path of building trust between both sides. One question it, it, is whether it, it, the Kurds for, want uh, a uh, independent a state for all Kurds in Iran, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, or whether they just want one independent state for themselves in each of those countries. 
We'll discuss that question when we get back after the break. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248 248- 299-3937. Store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria, as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248-990-4247. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Baladi. We are talking about the Kurdish issue. And one question is whether or not the Kurds in the region want one single um, state, independent state, to encompass all Kurds in Iran, Syria, Iraq, and Turkey, or whether they want an independent, a small independent state within each of those countries. Uh, let's go to Mr. Abbas. Uh, first, uh, before answering the question, a couple of points I want to bring up. I had heard uh, that the Kurdistan is surrounded by a nation, hostile nation. I agree. And all those nations, uh, if you want to consider them wolves in, in, the, in the horrible regimes, uh, it does not prevent you to, uh, to get submit to their uh, rule, uh, whether Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and Syria. That's, uh, it looks like the, the, the uh, Shia axis of evil is, is uh, increasing in that region. The second, in terms of legality, uh, you know, what legal basis you're talking about? It's illegally, the Kurdistan was uh, incorporated into Iraq and Syria and Iran and Turkey, and it's, uh, uh, it's about time to undo that. Uh, in terms of... Uh, the time uh, that is not right. So when is right? It's been more than a century. When is right? Um, and, and, and lastly, all these states are failed states. Look at the, let's learn from Israel, a nation that was all Arab nation fought them so many times. There's very little resources, tiny nation in the Middle East, yet they're a beacon of democracy and prospering in that region. Uh, and, and why they're doing better uh, than all the other Arab nations that they're digressing and killing their own people. Assad killed more uh, Arabs than Israeli, all the war with Israel combined. So uh, we need to be realist uh, on this issue. That, uh, that uh, what we have are failed state, all these regimes, they take resources and, 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 uh, and oppress their people by weapon to kill their own people and oppress them and blame everybody else uh, around the world and blame Israel and blame America. It's about time for us, uh, you know, to, to, to weed out these regimes and get rid of them. So on the uh, topic of the Kurdistan uh, you mentioned, the Kurds, uh, you know, it's, it's more than 45 to maybe even 50 million strong uh, people in that region. The Iraqi Kurds want to have an independent Kurdistan in Iraq. 
it's not for all the Kurds. Um, the Syrian Kurds, uh, they prefer to have some kind of federalism right now, and I think it's, uh, I, I support that. When you look at the Turkey and Iran, I think they, they should look at the same either is some federation, or if it's not federation, is independent, outright independent. But combining them, uh, it would be the same thing like Batas did, you know, trying to unite Arab, uh, and it never worked. And it was all kind of just a dream. I think, uh, in our opinion, the Kurds deserve a nation, at least in Iraq, and other parts, a federal system uh, with this nation uh, in Iran uh, or Turkey and Syria. Uh, if 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 the people decided to to go their own way, they should have their own state as well. So our goal shouldn't be to unite all the four together and let the, each region to decide how uh, what is the best solution for them. Uh, Mr. Macron, the U.S. has rejected the referendum, and they presented an an explanation uh, for why they did so. Uh, do you accept their explanation? What do you think the real reason for the rejection is? I mean, it's not for for me to. I mean, to explain. Uh, I mean, uh, to uh, why is, why uh, if it's accepted or the, uh, the justification. But uh, obviously, there's uh, wider U.S. Uh, interest at stake here. Uh, they don't want to completely lose their relation with Abadi, with the central government. This is a very critical period. Uh, Iraq is not only Kurdistan, there are other parts also that have uh, a lot of uh, interest for the for the U.S., whether the war on ISIS, whether uh, how to deal with, the, with Iran and Turkey. Uh, and uh, the second aspect is, yes, they see an, emerge, uh, a, a, an emerging Turkish-Iranian alliance are trying to, to basically reassert itself. So standing with Kurdistan uh, and uh, and not supporting Abadi in this will weaken also U.S. influence in the central government in, in Baghdad. Um, so uh, and and the third part is they don't want to get involved in uh, in, uh, in uh, internal Iraqi uh, feud in that sense, which has a impact, of course, but they don't want to be 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 part of it and has to take, have to take sides in that sense and uh, this will have impact also on uh, on their posture in the region and and the third aspect is also they have on my in their mind what's happening in uh, in Syria and uh, they don't want uh, basically to compromise also their their interests there so uh, and at the same time they don't want to lose having this connection this relation with Kurdistan that's why they are trying to make sure that there's no uh, uh, turning the table uh, from Iraq against Kurdistan by cutting all uh, all the uh, gateway for the outside world and also by not using force with them. I think they have the right approach, the U.S. administration in, in a general sense, but there should be more engagement from the president. We didn't see him give much attention to this issue. There should be more assertive for both sides that they need to talk, that they should avoid any unilateral uh, move. Uh, I think we need to see a much more involved uh, U.S. role in, in this crisis. Mr. Abbas, uh, do you see an independent Kurdish state in the heart of the Middle East as something good for the U.S.? I think it first it's good for the people of the Middle East. When we look, Iran is building this, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Shia Crescent uh, in trying to uh, do a Shia application in, in Iraq, in uh, Syria, and Lebanon, and Yemen, and elsewhere, and, and threaten the, the GCC and also the Kurdish people and others in the international community. So Iran is promoting terror, and, and, uh, and Iran should be stopped. And the other thing is also the Kurds, it is an example that could uh, be set to help the people of that, Iraq and Syria and, and Turkey and elsewhere in that region to start to change themselves and look at it. Look at the Kurdistan region, how it's been building, rebuilding, and, 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 and helping working with other ethnic and religious groups within Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, and it's not even a nation yet. And having the rights and, and speech and freedom and so on, yes, it's not a perfect, but it's one of the most perfect uh, along uh, that region and the whole Middle East. 
So uh, it is good for that and also good for America as well because, you know, you, you, we need to put a buffer. You know, you have a new Ottoman Empire emerging from Turkey uh, and we have a, a Shia crescent emerging from Tehran and all those threatened GCC countries and the Arab as well and the Kurds. And, and frankly, behind the scene, uh, more GCC are more su- uh, supportive of the Kurds than anybody else and Israel as well. And, of course, America... Uh, it has to balance, as Joe had mentioned, and need, they need to balance. And, and they realize only uh, boots on the ground, the only people who fought ISIS are the Kurds, and the only people who could stop the Shia uh, fication that is occurring uh, by Iranian regime into that part are, are the Kurds. So they view the Kurds as uh, oh, the, last blo- uh, the last barricade that could stop Iran and, and Turkey from threatening the international community in GCC as well. Uh, Mr. Wood, um, the U.S. has rejected the referendum, while Israel has welcomed the referendum. How do you explain that? Uh, actually, U.S. administration, uh, uh, you know, has uh, objective reasons to reject this referendum, especially at this time. Uh, they don't want to see uh, more problems in this, uh, you know, uh, region. Uh, but regarding the Israel uh, reaction uh, that's normal because uh, we know uh, Barazani family uh, they have a relationship with Israel since 1960 something so this is normal and uh, also uh, there is something uh, like uh, sympathy uh, between each other uh, actually I, I just would like to say uh, something uh, to our partner in the country uh, the Kurd, Kurdish people uh, you are main component in Iraq and the partners uh, in the political process and in the country. Uh, if anybody don't know this information, the Kurdish people available around the Iraq, especially in Baghdad and other region in Iraq. So uh, why, why we go to do a reckless step for nothing? Actually, the time is still available to resolve the problem according to the Constitution, uh, according uh, to the common things that uh, we have still between each other. Uh, we need now, actually, after uh, the war against ISIS finish, we can go back to the negotiation table and uh, completion of the national reconciliation. As I told you, we still we have problems with with other uh, components, and uh, we need uh, to uh, review uh, the resolutions that the Iraqi Parliament couldn't, uh, you know, legislated. Uh, every time related too many uh, bills, they should, uh, you know, review it. And also, again, the circumstances, regional and international, don't allow now to establish uh, the Kurdish state. I think the federal system uh, or maybe confederal system will be decent for all Iraqi, you know, territory. Uh, And also we have to complete the reconciliation project because that's supposed, this is the next step supposed to be uh, when they finish the ISIS because ISIS, this is the normal result after eight years, maybe over eight years from the uh, bad policy uh, and, uh, you know, as uh, you uh, just mentioned, uh, suppresses, it was, uh, you know, even now look at the, to the Sunni territory now. There are people now over three million displaced. Their city is destroyed. And also at least the, our, uh, you know, uh, our partner, I mean the Kurdish people, they have good res- representation and they were a part of the government. Uh, so regarding the previous policies, uh, they were, uh, you know, they, they have to do something, correct the track of the political process in Iraq. But the policy was ba- working based on consensus between the, all the, uh, the sides in the Iraqi process, a political process. So I think that the time we still we have time to resolve the problem according to the uh, partnership and uh, you know frankness 
and also uh, review all the things that, you know, disturbance uh, the fact in Iraq. One question is whether or not the Iraqi, the Kurdish referendum was a personal uh, ambition on the part of President Barazani, Kurdish President Barazani. We'll discuss that when we come back after the break. Life for Relief and Development is a nonprofit charity that has been providing humanitarian aid and development to people and communities regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background for over 22 years. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life rushes to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Life also has development projects that provide medical relief, water purification, educational programs, relief for orphans, and much more. Your help and support can greatly improve these efforts. All donations are tax deductible. For more information, please visit our website at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's lifeusa.org, 248-424-7493. Aswaq Zamzam al waqi ala 24065 Orshad Lik fi Medina in Farmington Hills to rahab bil jali al-arabiya wal kildaniya tanzilatun kabira ala umum al-mawad al-ghidaiya fi yawm al-arbiha min kulli isbu'a la tansu فرش كاري اوت جميع انواع المعجنات وايضا صواني الكنب المشكله والصمون الحار لحوم حلال الجاليه العربيه والاسلاميه الملحمه بإدارة قصاب الجاليه المعروف سلوان جربوع زوروهم على 24065 ارشد لك في مدينه فارمينغتون هيلز او اتصلوا بهم على 2484760300 اسواق زمزم للمذاق عنوان لجميع طلباتكم اتصلوا على 2484760300 اسواق زمزم للمعامله راقية وكرم أضيافة عنوان بدأناه معكم وعهدناكم على أن نستمر بمزيد من المتعة والعروض الحصرية على قناتي زي ألوان وزي أفلام زي ألوان هي أول وأكبر قناة مسلسلات عربية هندية في أمريكا أضخم الإنتاجات مسلسلات حصرية ومعازي أفلام فأنتم على موعد مع مغامرة جديدة كل يوم لاكتشاف سحر بولي تابعوا حصريا قناة زي ألوان وزي أفلام الآن في أمريكا على ديش نتورك وصلين تي في قشات ميديترينيان ماركت بإدارة سهر قشات وأولاده يرحبون بالجالية العربية والكلدانية جميع أنواع المواد الغذائية البان طازجة الكرزات والبهارات الطازجة داخل الأسواق مطعم ميديترينيان شيش كباب يقدم يوميا جميع أنواع الكباب المقبلات العربية العراقية وصواني الكامبو المميزة تفتح الأسواق من الثامنة إلى التاسعة مساء من الاثنين وحتى السبت ومن الثامنة صباحا إلى التاسعة مساء يوم الأحد تقع الأسواق على في 2839 نورث وسترن هايوي في مدينة فارمينغتون هيلز لحوم حلال للجالية الإسلامية لطلباتكم من المطعم كول 2485387855 that is 2485387855 قشة ميديترينيان ماركت خدمة متميزة ومعاملة راقية I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Valley. We are discussing the Kurdish issue and one question is, and I would like all my three guests to respond to the question. Uh, and I will start with Mr. Joe Macaron. The question is, as we know, Mr. Masoud Barazani, the Kurdish president in Iraq, his term as president expired two years ago, and there are elections scheduled November next year. 
some observers say that the referendum, the recent referendum, was an attempt by Mr. Barazani to make sure he gets elected next year. Mr. Macron. Maybe it's part of this calculation, but uh, I don't think it's the whole calculation. Uh, um, he sees the war on ISIS ending. He has leverage now because he's supporting the, the, the American forces on the ground. So he sees that this is the mo he saw oh, he, he saw this is his moment or oh, the moment for Kurdistan that before uh, when now he's needed he can basically uh, change the dynamic um, and in in some way he succeeded internally there is some rallying around uh, around him now in, in Kurdistan but on the long run how he can deliver uh, this is the question is how he will get out of this uh, crisis without impacting the economy and the survival of uh, of Kurdistan he, he took a big bet in that sense and uh, it's it's going to be challenging for him to how to maneuver this without having any uh, impact either politically or economically on uh, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, so far he's been uh, uh, a basic power in Kurdistan. He has no real challenger moving forward. He's been hinting that he's going to step aside on a uh, few positions. Uh, but uh, he might win in the short term uh, politically in Kurdistan. But the big question is how, how Kurdistan uh, and his legacy will be uh, on the long run, that's so why he, he did a big bet, and we're going to see how it will it will uh, it will evolve. Mr. Abbas, uh, first of all, Barzani's family have a history it goes to 1900s uh, on the Kurdish issue, uh, and Barzani's family have uh, a following in all parts of Kurdistan, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, they all love him pretty much. Uh, yes, we cannot say 99% uh, like the Syrian regime. But it's most of the Kurdish people do support and love Barzani's approach. Uh, Barzani, uh, he indicated he will not run for re-election. Uh, Barzani is more interested in moving his Kurdish issue forward. Yes, there are always they have personal interests, but absolutely the Kurdish issue here is at heart. Uh, and most Kurdish people want this, and this is an opportunity to do this right now for the Kurds, because when will be right? Uh, right now, we help finish ISIS, and now so we need to stop Iran from further intimidating the whole region and Turkey to do the same as well, intimidation that they're doing. Uh, we, we heard uh, the economic and some issues uh, possible uh, toward the Kurds. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's, there's a chemical weapons to use on, on Kurds. There was destruction. There was a double blockade by the international community in Iraq and in Saddam and Kurds, and Kurds uh, survived to manage or survivor we will manage uh, to get out of this but it is our uh, god-given right and we should uh, protect that and promote that in the, the issues of referendum uh, it is absolutely uh, above beyond barzani and this is a kurdish issue national issue for all the kurds uh, the international community sooner or later will accept that um, and uh, the kurds will uh, eventually uh, you, you know you have to take your rights Otherwise, nobody will give it to you. And if you play the, the good guy and, and not do anything, the international community will not uh, address your needs. The Kurds, it's about time to take their own rights and their own destiny and move it forward. It is essential for the international community and the people of the region to see the Kurds as a positive card uh, instead of a negative card. We need to balance the, 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 the Iran's aggression toward the Middle East and the international community. In Turkey, there's no Ottoman Empire aggression. So it, the Kurds uh, should not be viewed as an enemy. It should be viewed as, a, you know, those are the people that are not Arabs, and why we would want to make them as an Arab, and why we would want to make them part of a two-failed state. Look at all these nations. None of them have democracy. None of them have uh, um, any kind of elections, and all these elections are rigged. So if the Kurds have an election, even if there's some hint that the Barzani could benefit, we see uh, discussion while he's doing it for his own personal gain. But at least the other Arab nations, none of them have any elections. Uh, and they do oppress and, and they buy a, a stock of, of weapons to oppress their own people. It's about time for Middle Eastern to start to think, let's let people go their own way and work as partner, as friend, instead of just as an oppressor and master and slave. Ms. Dawood. Yes. 
Uh, actually, regarding uh, this um, uh, case, uh, I agree with your opinion because uh, uh, Mr. Barzani, uh, he was warned by this, uh, you know, uh, referendum uh, move to concentrate his authority as uh, only just uh, uh, only Kurdish uh, leader. He just uh, maybe. Uh, could announce their uh, or establish their state, and uh, that will, you know, will uh, create a, a emotional, you know, sympathy from uh, Kurdish people, and they gonna look to him as a hero. I think uh, he uh, he's invested the the situation, the weakness of Iraqi uh, government in Baghdad, and uh, you know the situation. Uh, politically and militarily, you know, around the territory, the war against ISIS, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he invested this situation to uh, make this a step. But again, again, this region is so complex area, and uh, we need uh, to find an uh, alternative solution uh, to resolve this uh, problem, and also uh, everything, even the disputes, uh, you know, areas. Uh, this is the uh, very uh, difficult heart uh, the, regarding the problems between the territory and uh, Baghdad, the disputes areas. I think still the opportunity is still available to resolve this problem according to the law, uh, to the Constitution, uh, you know, sponsored by United Nations, United States. Uh, European Union and uh, regional sites and Arabic sites also. Uh, actually, uh, again, the federal or confederal system is going to be decent for all the sites in Iraq. Mr. Macaron, uh, unlike uh, Catalonia and Spain, um, following the referendum, they declared independence. Uh, the, the Kurds, after the referendum, have yet to declare independence. So what is next, in your view? I mean, because in Spain, they, <clears throat> there's no... Um, um, the regional uh, countries, they are not having a role to pressure. So the dynamic is, is different. There's more... Uh, at stake uh, for them, they are more ready to intervene uh, uh, in, uh, in the government. So now I, uh, I think now that we are in, in somehow in a stalemate. Uh, the, the central government cannot take the decision to use all its powers <clears throat> and basically overturn what's, whatever happened in Kurdistan. At the same time, uh, uh, Barazani and the KRJ cannot also declare independence. So now uh, the U.S. and other sides are trying to stabilize the situation. Uh, may maybe things will calm down over time, and then there'll be some uh, initiatives, some mediation, uh, which are already going on now. Um, so uh, I, I see there's some glimmer of hopes uh, uh, might begin to, to... It's a little bit easy, but you have the Iranian foreign minister going... Uh, uh, to the funeral of uh, of, of Talbani, so uh, maybe there'd be some some talks at this point. The Americans are trying also to to calm the tensions. Turkey is still uh, threatening power. Uh, I think they are trying basically to force uh, Barzani to to a compromise uh, indirectly. I, I I don't see we're going toward a confrontation, a war, or or uh, or any kind of violent confrontation. Uh, but it's not going to be an easy road uh, to deal with this. But uh, but, but things will stabilize. Uh, uh, I hope moving forward. Joe Macaron, thank you very much. I also would like to extend my thanks to Mr. Shirko Abbas and also to journalist uh, Astabrak Dawood. And I will see you the first Friday next month. Goodbye.